So this is Mark 7, the scripture for January 9th. Jesus in this chapter sets some important boundaries. He establishes that he's primarily come to serve Jews, who were the people of God at that time. But he also establishes a boundary that he's not going to be like the other religious leaders who have been serving the Jews, or quote-unquote serving the Jews. In fact, he's going to oppose these folks while serving the Jews. Additionally, um, he wants to keep quiet exactly who he is. Scholars have noticed this, particularly in Mark, and they've called this the messianic secret. Messianic coming from the Hebrew term Messiah, which means anointed one. The Hebrews had predicted the coming of a Messiah who would save their people from oppression, liberate the Hebrew people for God. And they were expecting, at this point, a political Messiah, someone who would liberate them from Rome. So some scholars think that Jesus wanted this secret kept because if people knew he were the Messiah or thought he were, then they would expect him to be leading armies against Rome. Whatever the reason, Jesus came for the Jews, Jesus opposes the religious leaders, but Jesus also is not being 100% clear about who he is because of this messianic secret deal. Jesus reveals these three boundaries in the three stories in this chapter. We'll start with the first one, where Jesus uh, comes into direct confrontation with the religious leaders. Now, the religious leaders try to catch him here. They try to catch him in sort of a snare where they ask him, well, teacher, you who knows, why aren't your disciples washing their hands before meals? Uh, that's the tradition of the ancestors. And Jesus just drops the hammer on him. Jesus is not taking any of this and says, y'all are a bunch of hypocrites. You say one thing and you do another. Instead of answering their question, he says that they're abandoning God's commandments and says that uh, instead of obeying God's commandments, they've, they've put tradition in the way of obeying God's commandments. And then gives a couple examples. And then he tells the, the rest of the people who are gathered uh, that, you know, this is this idea of traditionally washing your hands before a meal, washing cups, washing plates, not actually that important. And you'll note, actually, if you read some of the Gospels, if you continue with this reading plan, that throughout the Gospels, the people that Jesus gets pissed off the most against are the religious leaders. There's nobody who just as reliably gets Jesus' goat. Um, and Jesus regularly will get riled up against the religious leaders, in part because these are the people who should be helping others understand what God's doing and helping others understand that they're beloved by God. But what they do is they keep putting more and more requirements on the people to the point that the people are exhausted. And so Jesus just gets really frustrated with the religious leaders to the point of anger, to the point of direct confrontation. Then he tells the, the, the crowds that are gathered, he says, you know, washing your hands, washing your plates, that's all well and good, but you got to take care of your souls too. It's what comes out of a person's heart that actually defiles. And he gives a bunch of examples, a bunch of what, what, what may look like sin. And I wonder for us now, I wonder if we take s spreading sin as seriously as we take spreading the flu. I mean, we wash our hands whenever we feel sick, whenever we sneeze, whenever we go to the restroom. Do we wash our spiritual hands when we have issues with sin? I wonder about that with our church. I think that's a harder thing to do. So then Jesus goes and, she, and, and he meets a Gentile, uh, uh, someone who's from Syrophoenicia, a woman. And then he holds the boundary uh, saying that he was set for the Jews, not for the Gentiles. And this woman uh, essentially begs him and says, look, even if, you know, I, I'm not the person you came for, couldn't you at least spare a little grace, spare a little love? And Jesus does. He, he, his heart is moved and he spares some, some grace for this person. And this is the beginnings, the first hints that Jesus' presence here on earth isn't just for the Jewish or the Hebrew people. It may be for all people. And then finally, he heals a deaf man. And, and the Gospels go through some description about what exactly he does here. This, this Gospel of Mark, it says, he plugs fingers into the man's ear, he spits and puts a finger on the man's tongue. But after healing the man... Everybody wants to talk about it because of course they do. This man was deaf and had a speech impediment and now can speak and hear just like anybody else. But Jesus, possibly for the same reason that he speaks in parables, possibly because he wants to tell all the truth but tell it slant so that he doesn't dazzle the people 
with too much truth at one time. Jesus doesn't want them to tell anyone. This goes back to the messianic secret. Whether it's because he doesn't want to be held up as a political leader or a political hero, whether it's because he wants to keep keep himself veiled a little longer because the people may not be able to understand what he's there doing. He asks people, keep it secret. This is all for Mark 7, and tomorrow, January 10th, we'll look at Mark chapter 8. May God bless you in your reading of Scripture.